Good day and welcome to the math salon. I'm Dr. Anamendem. We are going to look at the paper 3 math mechanics questions for the advanced levels. Here we'll be talking today about system of forces. But this will be the case where the system of forces form a couple. That means we generally know that when system of forces contain more than one force acting on an object or a particle, there are three scenarios. They can form a resultant force. In that case, the particle moves in the direction of the resultant force. Or the sum of this force can just be equal to zero and the object doesn't move, it stays on the spot. Or the form, the sum of the force equal to zero, but the object rotates about an axis, not moving in the resultant force direction, but it rotates about an axis. That's what we call a couple. So if you have, for example, a steering wheel and you, you have a force acting on your left hand and another on your right hand, then they have to be in such a way that they're in opposite direction and equally magnitude to cause your steering wheel to rotate. It doesn't move up its axis. It stays on its axis, but it rotates. That's what we call a couple. So here we will look at it this way. So they say the force is F1, 2i plus beta Jn, F2, minus i plus 2Jn, and so forth. Act through the points with position vectors given as what you see there. This is x i plus 5j, and that respectively. Given that this system of forces is equivalent to a couple of magnitude 12 newton, find the values of scalar alpha and beta and the possible values of the scalar x. So here, we are given that the system of forces or system, not just a system forms, just short form, a couple. If that is true, then that implies that the forces, the sum of those forces should be equal to zero. But the sum of their moments should not be equal to zero. So sometimes you can get the same question, but you're asked to show that the forces are given with this with position vector, show that the system forms a couple. Then you have to check that the sum of those forces is equal to zero first, and that the sum of the moments of those forces, that is the turning force, the effect. So the force results in a rotation instead of moving. So that rotation caused by the force is called the moment of the force. Usually the force times the perpendicular distance to the axis of rotation. So we will see that also maybe in some other questions later when we do, for example, ladder problems. But here, this is a simple case here. So we'll start with the first one. So we are told to look for the values of this is alpha and that is beta. So we'll take the first part. We already told that this system forms a couple. So we show the sum of the forces should be equal to zero. So this should be zero. So let's just sum them there. So that is going to be 2i plus beta j plus so I'll just say minus i plus 2j plus alpha i minus 4j. So if we arranged it properly, then this is 2i minus i, that is simply i, and i plus alpha i, I'll write in the nice from 1 plus alpha, or that i. Beta j plus 2j minus 4j. The 2j minus 4j is minus 2. So I'll write this in a nice form as beta minus 2j. This should be equal to 0. Actually, this we'll call like a 0 vector. The idea of this is that you see this as 0i plus 0j. And if these two are equal, it means that the corresponding i's and the coefficient should be the same. That means 1 plus alpha should be equal to 0. And this implies here that alpha is equal to minus 1. Then beta minus 2 is equal to 0. That means beta is equal to 2. So that's fine. So our alpha is equal to minus 1 and beta is 2. That's done. Let's go to the B part. The first part was done using only the forces, so that was okay. That's why I chose this first equation. But now the second one says something about the position vector. So, and the only next equation I know with position vector is this one. So, I'm going to use that. So, for the B part, we are expected to also not check this, but sum these moments. And we are told that when we take the magnitude of that sum, it should be equal to 12 newton meter. That's what we're told. The magnitude of the couple is equal to 12 newton meter, force times distance. So, what we left to do is try to come out with this left hand side and equate it to 12. To do a cross product, I already indicated to you about the dot product. I said, if two vectors multiply each other, it's not like a scalar quantity that you have 2 times 3 is equal to 6. When two vectors multiply, there are two definitions. 
If the two vectors multiply to produce a scalar, just a normal that without vectors, then we say that's a scalar product or dot product, and we represent the, the, the multiplication with the dot. So A dot B, the two vectors. If the two vectors multiply to produce a vector, then we say that it's a vector product or cross product, and we indicate with a cross. So at the end, the new result of that product is a vector. And this is usually defined by using determinant of a matrix. <clears throat> I will not go too much to the details of that definition here, but you just have to know that this is defined like this. So if I have two vectors, A, which is equal to, for example, AI plus BJ plus CK, and yeah, another vector B, which is equal to A2I plus B2J plus C2K, then A cross product B is simply the determinant. You keep a row for your vectors because the new result to a vector, we keep this vector row here to contain my I, J, and K. That's what I identify because these are unit vectors. That's what makes a, a, yeah, a quantity that you write, a vector. So if that's the case, then the rest just follow. The number is A, B, C, and then A2, B2, C2. If you do this determinant, you get what is called a cross product. Usually when you cross two vectors, you, you the resultant of that is a vector that is perpendicular to the two vectors that you have. So we always introduce our K even when we have a vector only in two dimensions. So in this case, we will take the first one here. We write our I, J, K. So I start with R1, that is 1 plus 3, 1, 3, 0. There is no K, so it actually means the K component does not exist, but we can put it as 0 K, that's no problem. So this is 1, 3. And then we take the force, that is 2i, our beta already calculated, and that was 2. So this is 2, 2, 0. Plus, go to the next one. We start with our i, j, and k, so that it defines our vector at the end. And then we take this one, r2, the x there, we don't know, we, are, we will look for it, that's why it, it stays here. x, 5. And the force corresponds to that as minus 1, 2. Minus 1, 2. So our 0, 0. Plus, I, J, K. If we look at this as well, we get our R3. That's minus 1, 1. And we take our force. That is alpha. Alpha, we saw alpha was minus 1. And that is minus 4. 0, 0. So let's do that. If I take I here to look for the determinant, you choose a row. Here we always choose the first row. Because we want to get a vector. There's no need doing that. You can do that, but it doesn't, it's not helpful. So we always take the first row and expand about that. So if I take I, normally I delete the column and the row containing I and look for the determinant of the submatrix. 3 times 0 minus 2 times that's 0 minus 0. So that's 0. So the I does not exist. If I take J, I delete the column and the rows containing J, then I'm left with 1, 2, 0, 0. 1 times 0 is 0 minus 2 times 0 is 0. So J does not help as well. So if I take K, I delete the column and the row containing K, then I have the determinant of the submatrix. This one works. 1 times 2 is positive 2. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. So this is minus 4K. We come to this one. I already showed you the problem with I and J since we have two zeros here. So we can just expand on K directly. And this is X times 2. So that is 2X minus minus 1 times 5. So that's plus 5. Plus. I come here, I do the same. I expand about that. So this minus one times minus four is plus four. Minus minus one is plus one. So that is five. K. Okay. Sorry, there's a K here as well. So if I arrange that well, you see that the mine uh, five K and minus four K is just one K over. So this is two X plus five K plus K. I can also fix it. I can take the k outside. I'm going to get one sum to get this. So this is simply 2x plus 6. All that k. So I'm left to look for the magnitude of that. And that's the magnitude of 2x plus 6 k. And we are told the answer is 12 newton meter. So that's also newton meter. That's what I mean. So this is newton meter so we can also do newton meter and they can fall off there just for simplicity 
So the, man, the determinant of a matrix or the magnitude is simply this squared square root. So that's 2x plus 6 squared square root, and that's equal to 12. If I square both sides, this will say that my, I'll just do it below here, 2x plus 6 squared is equal to 144. If I take the square root of both sides, then 2x plus 6 will be equal to plus or minus 12. So if I do that here, you can see my 2x plus 6 is equal to plus or minus 12. If I divide all through by 2, this is x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus 6. So my x is equal to plus or minus 6 minus 3. And this will be minus plus 6 minus 3, that's plus 3. Or minus 6 minus that, minus 9. So those are the possible values of x. Hope you did follow it. If you did, please some thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends. I insist that you try to subscribe. That helps me very much to know how many people are following this and how important it is. And also that you get an alert once I upload new videos. Bye.